Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel as I knock over tools. Sorry, it's been a while. I've been uh, taking a little bit of a break from creating content and stuff because I uh, just needed a little bit of time to do some stuff around the house and figure out what I'm doing next. And uh, I got quite a bit of a break between uh, my last race and this race. So I've just been trying to figure out stuff to do in the background. I started another project, which you'll see eventually, but the first day working on it was so taxing. I said, you know what? I'm going to do something else. I'm going to do something race car related. So I'm in the garage. And yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff on the, on the shelf to work on. So if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I'd greatly appreciate it. This, I've got all sorts of rigs. I got a drive shaft. So I'm doing wheelbase. I'm working on stuff. I got the car in the air. I had the rear end out so that I could straighten it. I should have filmed the video on it. But, I mean, what are you going to do? I've got the drive shaft out. Again, I'm doing all sorts of things at once trying to prepare. I'm trying to make sure I got time to do this. But you can look at the drive shaft here. And you can see that there are really bad marks in the U-joint race, I would say. And there's some, you can see kind of scalloping in the back here. It's hard to see, but... And there's a little bit around here too on this edge right here so i'm wondering if something's gone awry with the, the angle of the drive shaft if it's not straight or if it's attached to the rear end improperly i don't really know so i've got two new um new joints just to have a spare I checked this one and this one is absolutely brilliant. I wonder if it was just a cheap U-joint or if I had the rear end angle wrong or something, I, or pinion angle wrong. I don't really know. Bottom line is something went wrong and now I gotta fix it. And that kind of stinks because I had to put a conversion U-joint on it because when I built this rear end, I just had parts lying around. So I didn't know what was what. And it's a Ford nine inch rear but apparently it had the long wide yoke on it. I didn't know anything about it. I know GM rears, I don't know Ford stuff. So apparently the long wide yoke takes essentially the same size U-joint, or the wide yokes I should say, take the same basic U-joint as the GM ones that I'm used to. So I had to get a 1310 to 1330 adapter to make this end wider and because this end smaller because I got like an aftermarket drive shaft, you know, because I needed a shorter one because apparently it's a longer yoke, pinion, whatever thing. I don't know, I just built it. <laughs> it works, but it's just a learning process at this point. But I gotta change that U joint out. Then we're gonna string the car. And by stringing the car, hopefully, I'll find what's been wrong with my chassis all along. If I don't find anything, then I got a few ideas as to what could be wrong with the handling. Um, other than that, I really don't know. I'm just trying stuff and spitballing ideas, but let's get to work because we ain't gonna get nothing done talking here. It's the next day, and as you can see, I've got a lot going on here. Because I am attempting to string the car, obviously I'm stringing both sides, as you can tell. There's strings on both sides. And things are not going very well, to be, fire, uh, to be honest. As you can see, I've been sitting like this with my head in my hands. So now my hair is all screwed. Actually, it looks pretty good. <laughs> Not the point. The point is we have big problems. Um, I must have screwed up 
when I built this rear and not known it. It's straight now, but the wheelbase is completely wrong. Completely wrong. And I can tell that for some reason or another, it's got to be the lower pickup points for the trailing arms that are not set properly. I tried, I tried my best to build a jig, which eh, you can't really see it. It's kind of buried in the weeds back here. I tried my best to build a jig that would mimic a stock rear end and basically show me all the pickup points and base everything off of, let's say, the axle tubes. Problem is the axle tubes on a GM rear are smaller than a Ford rear. Ford rear has three inch axle tubes. I think that a stock GM has like two and three quarters. It's smaller. It's just smaller. So I don't think that the axle pickups went onto this rear straight. And so um, <laughs> I don't know what to do. I'm not going to tell you what's wrong. Just know that the wheelbase is not where it should be. All of the work that I've done stringing the car and measuring, I've been measuring for hours. I mean, hours and hours. I mean, it, I must have been out here so far. I watched the entire Xfinity Series race. So I've probably been out here five hours just with a tape measure and strings. Nothing is lining up. Nothing. It's not good at all. Like, I'm wondering why the car doesn't handle ever since I put this rear end in. I think I figured it out. And I'm glad I have a month to fix this. Because I'm at the point right now where do I just buy a new housing and just take this one and try to fix it later for a spare? Or do I try to fix this one? Or do I go get my spare um, seven and a half out? I have too much invested in this rear end to just get rid of it. I have to fix it, obviously. But do I fix it now with the time that I have? Or do I try another rear out with a gear ratio that works and try this one later? This is the bad part of being your own crew. Because now I have to reap the repercussions of my own work that I put into this car and it's it's tough this sucks i'm not gonna lie to you this this is terrible like this is stuff that people just quit racing over <laughs> like do i need this headache you know do i need this or do i say okay well it's my own stupid fault and i gotta just take the brunt of this one and fix it I mean it sucks either way I'm gonna have to do something either way if I want to compete so instead of instead of jaw jack and I know what I have to do I'm gonna take a couple more measurements but this ain't good I'm telling you now it's not good so I'll catch up with you as soon as I figure out what I'm gonna do So it's come to this, I've got the death wheel out and I'm gonna try my best to just kind of knock this off. I don't think I'm gonna be able to, but if push comes to shove, maybe I'll try to get new mounts, but this thing is not good. So I'm gonna try, but again, I don't really know what's gonna happen here, so. Mm. 
at least I got built in eye protection with glasses on, but okay. This bracket cut off. You can see it's not a very clean job because the death wheel really just didn't work. So I resorted to whatever that buzzing sound is in the background, my fire scissors or a plasma torch. So I got this side I gotta cut off. I'm just gonna take them both. I figure I'm just gonna buy new ones. I already got them on order. I don't know when they're gonna show up, but I gotta cut the thing right off. Hopefully I don't puncture the axle tube because then I'd, I don't wanna get that dirty and I don't wanna have to weld that back up because I don't wanna heat the rear end and have it distend or something. <laughs> Good idea to glove up. And these plasma torches are kind of loud too, so I put headphones on as well, just to keep my ears from blowing out. So what you want to do is you always want a hammer and always check to make sure it's clean. And if it's not working, so maybe you got to tighten up your uh, expendables that are in here. If you buy a cheap one of these off of like Amazon or something, which is what I did, and they sell extra expendables, buy as many as you can. If you buy as many as you can, and the company from China or wherever goes belly up, at least you can use it for a heck of a long time or until it breaks. But this one's pretty good. But anyway, when you're cutting something like this and you can't get in here, to, you can get in there with a welder, but you can't get in there with this thing to cut it back off because you're dumb and you welded it on wrong because your jig didn't take into account the fact that everything is not the same size as stock but needs to be in stock location anyway what i do is i just go and i cut a big window open because you're cutting it off anyway i'm not going to reuse this if i'm cutting it off i'm cutting material out of it so i just cut a big window out of it and then you can reach your tool in there and basically just reach up and finish the job so let's do that Did the ground fall off? The exact what I thought might happen might have just happened. I think I gotta... Yeah, sometimes with the hot, cold cycles, it tends to loosen up the expendables in here. Like if you're using a plasma torch and you got, you know, your hammer, you gotta wear good gloves, sunglasses really helps. But a nice pair of pliers helps too because sometimes you just gotta kinda get in here and check your electrode. Make sure you got, like make sure it's, oops. Make sure it's tight. Use them to just kind of tighten that up. Be very careful because there's ceramic 
uh, whatever these things are called. <laughs> I don't know, but I'll just put that on. Let me just check my ground real quick. Okay, let's see if this thing works again real quick. Huh, that ain't working. And I don't know why. Hmm. Guess I should have taken it. Damn it. Guess I should have taken a closer look at the. No, well, that should work. I don't know what the heck's going on here. I think I found the problem. I guess that's not the ground. It's the positive side, and when you use the torch, that's the negative. What the hell's the difference, anyway? So anyway, back to what we were doing. I'm just kind of waiting on parts, and I don't really have any thing to do other than get this thing prepped and ready for new parts, and I'm sick of you guys waiting for a new video to come out, so maybe I'll just part one this thing. So we cut the window. So now that I've cut my window, oh. there we go. Now I can get in there with the torch and just go right around it. Catching fire, you jerk. Okay, let's not go towards that expensive hydraulic hose. Let's go this way. Towards my much more expensive phone. Camera. Okay. So that'll probably do it for part one of this series because it's been way too long since I put a video out. Surprise, I got a haircut, by the way. Um, it's been way too long since I've put anything out and I'm doing work. It's just, I keep, you know, it's such a tedious business owning a race car, especially by yourself that sometimes you just can't be bothered filming because you're doing so much work that you got to take extra time to put the cameras up and film and tripods and set shots and this and that. It's just so, f so difficult sometimes. And, uh, I promise I'll keep filming more, but, um, I'm waiting on parts. I've got parts that have been, I don't know, I ordered them in April. Well, mid to late April and it's May and uh, I still don't see them yet. So I haven't even gotten a tracking number, but um, I got parts that need to come in for this thing for me to even try to compete and um, <laughs> still waiting. So, uh, once I get those in, I'll start jumping back on this thing. But for right now, I just have to clean up the uh, parts that I cut off the axle. Um, I got to get welding gas. So that's going to take up an afternoon and go down there and get that done. And hopefully I get some parts in soon. Hopefully I can actually 
entertain or at least inform. Maybe that was a little bit informative. Who the heck knows? Um, I don't know where, like I said, I got that plasma torch from Amazon, I think. It was probably less than 300 bucks. I mean, it works, works like a charm. Um, I've used it quite a bit, but all you really need is like an air compressor, but you probably need a big one, you know, so you don't want to use that with a small one. You'll just use your, um, <laughs> you'll use your compressor up. It'll probably burn out trying to keep up. But, um, anyway, I got a lot to do. We still got some time. It's just, it's so frustrating. You know, it's incredibly frustrating. I already told you all about it in the earlier parts of the video and I'm sure you understand. And it's just a real, I don't know what that was, but it's just a real pain. So I got a podcast to record tonight, so I'm gonna get the heck out of here. Um, I don't feel like throwing grindings all over my all over my face. So, anyway, thank you all for watching. Watch for part two coming soon. Subscribe if you can. Help me grow this thing up. I want to be able to actually have a bunch of people that I can maybe help teach or maybe help they can teach me. I don't know. I'd like to learn, and that's why I do this as a hobby. And um, again, I greatly appreciate everybody who does subscribe and all the kind words and stuff. So thank you all again. I appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you next time.